In this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating this really cool animated 3D effect where we fly through a still photo and make it look like we're actually flying through the scene as if we've made it a 3D scene itself. It's pretty cool. I don't even know if there's a name for this effect. Stick around and check this tutorial out. I think you might learn something. It's very experimental, very much on the cutting edge of Photoshop in terms of 3D and animation. You're going to learn all about it right now. Hey everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Now today we've got this tutorial. I don't even have like a real title for it yet because I don't even know what to call it. But right now my working title is Create, Animate, and Fly Through 3D Space in Photoshop CC. Very ambiguous, not very specific, um, but it's really, really cool. I don't know how else to describe it. It's really neat. It's it approaches mind blowing. I'll put it to you that way. Um, it, it I kind of bumped into this while I'm messing around with my tutorial that would have gone up right before this tutorial uh, about three a three D parallax effect. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. It's a good tutorial, I think. Interesting. But this tutorial is definitely very uh, experimental. Um, I don't know that we're even going to get a great finished product necessarily, but you're definitely going to learn a bit about Vanishing Point and 3D and perspective um, and animating 3D in Photoshop and maybe thinking about working with 3D a little bit differently than you ever have before. Definitely a cool effect. Stick around. Check it out. Let's get started here in Photoshop where we have an image from unsplash.com. Our friends over at Unsplash, uh, it's all a bunch of free stock photos and they're pretty cool. They're pretty great. Uh, I've got a link for this one down in the description of the video. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to transform this to a 16-9 ratio image because we're probably going to be exporting a video at the end of this. In fact, I want to say we're definitely going to be exporting a video at the end of it and the video is going to be 1920 by 1080 pixels. That is a 16 to 9 ratio uh, frame size. So we want to change the ratio of this image. We're going to do that using the crop tool from the drop down menu here you can see we have 16.9 as a preset which I obviously use fairly often um, I'm gonna just drag this down a little bit there we go place it like that go ahead and hit the check icon to commit my change um, and what we're gonna do in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna select this again I'm gonna choose to delete the cropped pixels because I just want to work with just this image I don't want anything else getting in the way diluting it one side note when you bring this into Photoshop you'll probably have a locked background layer so like layer uh, or if we go, yeah, if we go like layer, flatten image, you have a locked background layer. You don't want a locked background layer. You want to double click to unlock that and make sure you're working with a fresh layer, not a smart object. We can't use vanishing point on a smart object. Now, once you have your image to this size, the next thing that we want to do is go filter vanishing point. Up here in the vanishing point dialog, what we're going to do is use the create plane tool. So that's this tool right here. You can see it's, it's the only tool you can really use right away. Create plane tool. And I like to just kind of right out of the gate create a simple plane uh, that goes from right about where I just would find maybe a little below the va the real vanishing point. Um, just kind of to front and center here in my image. So it's a nice simple perspective plane. Now the perspective plane shows up as red because it's a bad perspective plane. I can adjust my points and make sure I get a good perspective plane here. Photoshop says, hey, there's a good perspective plane. So I'm going to live with that. Great. Now one of the things that I'm going to do here is I kind of sort of want wherever they can be, I want the the edge lines of my perspective planes to um, to run through areas that are easy to blend. So there's a lot of small detail here with all these trees being so far away. All that fine detail will blend pretty well. Now sadly over here on this side, and I actually need to make this a little bit wider, uh, we kind of just have to split this round rock in half because uh, either we get the entire round rock or we end up like cutting the toe of this rock formation off. And I think this rock formation, it's more important that this remains totally intact than the round rock doesn't have any issues. So that's the, we're, we're kind of just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna roll with that. Next, I'm gonna hold down my commander control key and select the center anchor point here. And I'm gonna pull a perspective grid straight up. It's kind of the only direction it'll let me pull it. Hold down the alter option key and we get this rotate error and we're gonna lay this... Uh, this grid down. I'm actually going to suck the grid in a little bit because I don't want to take too much of the toe off of this rock formation, right? 
Uh, in fact, I'm going to rotate this grid upward just a tiny bit. I'm going to pull out a tiny bit so it covers all the grassy tree stuff over here. I'm going to hold down Command or Control again. I'm going to pull out another grid. I'm going to use my Alt or Option key. I'm rotating here just till this meets up slash covers basically just the tips of those little rocky formations. Now that we're into the clouds, I'm going to pull a grid up. I'm going to rotate it over. Maybe something like that. Command or Control and pull another grid out. Something like that. Command or Control pull out yet another grid. I'm going to rotate this grid kind of to the mountaintops, right? So it's just going right to the tips of the, that little rocky formation. I'm going to pull out another grid. And this one is going to come down to the base of this rocky formation. Actually, I feel like this should almost be tilted a little bit more. There we go. And then I'm going to hit Command or Control and drag out our last grid. Well, our second to last grid, really. And I'm going to set this and have this hopefully meet up pretty well here with our original initial starting grid, a ground plane. All right, now that we've done that, we can go and we can tweak the length of any of these grids if we see any uh, bits that we need to extend. I'm going to pull back on this one just a tiny bit. And I'm going to keep this bottom center one selected. I'm going to hit Command or Control and pull a grid right out of the back of that ground plane. So we pulled a grid straight up and I'm going to stretch it out to the sides because basically I just want this grid to cover sort of the, the opening in that hole at the end of this tunnel of perspective grids. I can zoom out. We can see our perspective grids are going a little crazy here. So I'm going to select each one of them and I'm going to just crunch them in a little bit um, just because we don't need them to be this obscene. Crush this one down. Crush this one down. Great. Zoom back in. All right, now what I want to do is select one of my uh, perspective grids, hold down Shift, and select all of the others. I like to select the grid on the back at the very end just to make sure I selected everything around the edges first. And then we're going to go up here to the little grid drop down uh, or the vanishing point drop down. Now, before I talk about this drop down, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com all about how to retouch photos. You're going to learn a ton about Photoshop if you pick up that course. A link just appeared for it somewhere up there in the top corner of the video. Pick up the course. It helps support what we do here at tutvid.com. Helps us push toward the next big thing. And uh, just keep doing what we do. If you pick one up, thank you so much. If not, the advertisers still. Uh, have a payout here for this video as well. So we can, we both win, right? You get a free tutorial, and uh, I get a little something for it too. Uh, so now here in the drop-down menu, I want to choose Return 3D Layer to Photoshop. Kind of an important little option to select. And I've got all these grids selected. I'm going to hit OK here. And Photoshop's going to give me this sort of new 3D scene dialog box where I like to keep pixels selected as my unit of measure. It's all relative when you're working in 3D, really. Uh, X, Y, and Z I'm not going to mess with, and I'm going to hit OK. Photoshop's going to say, hey, look, we're switching to 3D workspace because you're working on a 3D layer. Go for it. And I, I should just pause here. Anything that you're going to get at this point, we're all getting different effects. Maybe yours looks totally terrible. You might need to just undo, go back, and create new vanishing point grids. That just happens sometimes because um, we're not technically going in and finding the, the horizon and vanishing point and all that. We're kind of just freehanding it and creating our own grids. Um, so what you're going to get is going to be different than what I get. What I get is going to be different than what you get. What I get is going to be different than what I get if I do this again in five minutes. It's just how it is. Again, it's a very experimental thing. We're just going off kind of into the great blue yonder. Um, in fact, I can see that my my image is a little kind of blurred and distorted here on the edges. Not a huge fan of it, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, one of the things that I want to do, I want to show you guys just the general gist of what we're shooting at here. I've got the 3D slide camera tool or slide the 3D camera tool selected. And basically what I can do is if I pull down, you can see I can almost fly through the 3D space quite Cool, right? I'm just going to right click over here and choose to return me to my default uh, camera view. We can animate this, and this is where things get cool because we can kind of like animate almost a camera dipping into this valley here between these rocks. You can imagine how cool this would look with, look with like an interior photo where you take an interior shot and you can almost animate just a slow push into the room. It doesn't have to be anything dramatic. In fact, we might go a little dramatic just for dramatic effect. But one of the other things, too, I should point out, there are these lines. Those are where the edges of our, our perspective grid, those 3D objects are meeting up. There's not really a huge amount we can do. It's just kind of 
part of what you live with. This is why, why I was saying we might not really get a usable, professional, finished effect. This is more about just testing the limits of what we can do with 3D and Photoshop. All right, uh, let me just collapse this. We've got this layer here. It's called Temp. I'm going to rename it 3D because we're going to open up our timeline. Now we're going to go Window Timeline. And I'm going to choose to create a video timeline. Now your other option is Frame Animation. We want Video Timeline. So Video Timeline, click it. Uh, we've got our Layer 0. Ignore that. We're just working on the 3D layer for now. I'm going to hit this little arrow to twirl this down. And hey, look at this. 3D camera position. Now, number one, I'm going to zoom this out a little bit using this little uh, this little uh, dealio down here, this little slider. And uh, I'm going to reduce the overall time from five seconds to probably like two seconds, maybe a little more than two seconds. Grab the end of my 3D layer and go, yeah, let's go like two minutes or, or two seconds, excuse me, two point, you know, whatever, two, two and a third seconds. Now what I want to do is my playhead is right there. It's that little blue thing, right? That little blue pointer. I'm going to hit the little stopwatch icon, this icon right here for 3D camera position. I'm going to click that. What it's going to do is drop this keyframe right here at the beginning of my timeline. Now I'm going to go all the way to the end of the timeline. I want to make sure that I'm not off the end of the timeline. Like right there, I'm off the end of the timeline. I'm back to my original image. So I'm going to go back one frame right to there where I know I'm working on my 3D image or my 3D layer. And I can simply move the 3D camera's position. Photoshop will automatically drop a keyframe. So let's just try to animate this camera moving like straight forward. I don't know. We actually don't want to go too, too much because remember, this is only over the course of two seconds. Let's go like that. You can see Photoshop drops a keyframe. Great. And I can just back this up. It's going to be too much for Photoshop to render this right here live in Photoshop. Remember, it's a massive image. Our image size is what? 5,472 pixels wide by 3,078 tall. So it's a big, big image file. So to get a look at this and how it's looking, instead of waiting for it to render here in Photoshop, let's render this file out uh, as, a, as a movie. I'm going to grab this kind of like selected area and just bring it back to the edge of my layer. So we're going to render out, you know, just over two seconds of this instead of the whole five second bit. We'll go File, Export, and choose Render Video. Now here in Render Video, we're just going to stick with the kind of, you know, uh, straight up presets we have here. I'm going to go with, where is it? Maybe I'll go YouTube 1080p at 30 frames per second. Cool. Uh, that's probably fine. And I'm just going to name this uh, Landscape. I'll name it landscape hyphen hyphen 01 and I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Go ahead and hit the render button. All right, let's jump out to our desktop here and there it is landscape hyphen 01. Let's double click to open it up in the QuickTime player. And we can see the I mean the lines are very pronounced, so not not that great. But remember this is created in Photoshop. And you can see there we are just sliding sort of forward and to the side through 3D space, very smoothly, in fact, I would I would add. Um, we almost, I feel like it needs to be a little bit more dramatic than that uh, to really make it worth our money here. So I'm going to come back out here to the keyframe. So just move the playhead out here. I'm using the, the slide tool again. I'm going to try to keep this more of a straight line effect, going straight over the rocks. There we go, something like that. Let's go back to the beginning, though. Um, and I want to adjust the camera position a little bit even here. I think I want to tilt the camera a little bit toward the ground. What this is going to do is it's sort of going to give this effect that the camera begins tilted toward the ground, and as it levels out, it, we're zooming through the valley. So it's going to give us kind of this dip and zoom through the valley effect. This is a total crapshoot here, I have to add. Sometimes it looks really cool. Sometimes it just flat out doesn't work. We're going to do this using the 3D uh, like rotational tool here. The Oh, the orbit, the 3D camera. Sorry, this is the rotate or roll the 3D camera. The orbit 3D camera tool. And all I want to do, I'm back here at my starting position. Again, we're just messing with camera position. If I go over here to 3D, we can see we've got our, our scene selected here. I'm going to rotate the 3D camera so it's looking, whoa, you can see how I mean just how much it moves. We're going to just be very, very careful here. We're going to try being very careful. All right, let's just uh, let's right click and, and move this back to default view mode. Uh, I think what we'll try instead is come up here to the properties panel and choose the little coordinates icon here. And we're going to just manually use the move and the, the angle and all of these different uh, features up here. Now, just hang with me here. We're going to set the Z here. Let's try setting it to 3000. You can see we're really... Uh, where the camera has been moved to an elevated position. We've got we've gained some altitude, but the problem is uh, we've moved beyond the sky, so we've got some crazy white action happening up there. Let's go ahead and reduce the X or um, increase the X axis here, uh, and just to shift this back down, great. We can even roll it a little bit. It does need to be sort of leveled out a touch. And our the little Z axis is going to simply move us side to side. So 
I'm going to move and make sure that I'm kind of centered up the way I need to be centered up. And if I look at this and say, you know what, it really needs to be like maybe 3,400 instead, I might need to, you know, once again, go ahead and adjust and, you know, set my camera wherever it needs to be set and just, you know, slide things around wherever they need to be. Now, this is my camera's starting position. Remember, we're over here working on this first keyframe right here. So it's going to animate from this position to a much lower position where it's kind of coasting through the valley. Now that we have this, let's try rendering out the video, going File Export Render. And I'm going to choose instead here, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to go back to what we've been doing, actually. Uh, you know what? Actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go... Let's just stick with medium quality and let's choose the HDTV 1080p. Uh, I like what Photoshop is subtly hinting at here because it should be a little bit faster. Landscape hyphen O2, we're exporting the desktop, great. Uh, this is not our finished project. This is just kind of like a, a mid render here. We're just gonna go medium quality and uh, 30 frames per second. Go ahead and hit render, give it a moment and we'll be right back. Alrighty, there we go. Let's jump out to the desktop once more. There it is, landscape 02. Just zoom this back a little bit. Those lines, they bug me so much, don't they? Wish it was a perfect blend. Let's check it out here. And you can see how the camera just kind of does this rotate as it pushes into the valley. Pretty stinking cool. Really, really neat. Um, all right, so last but not least, let's take a look at maybe changing the depth of field of this camera to maybe uh, we could start it out so it begins kind of blurry and without very much depth of field and clears up as the camera moves forward. Um, or there's all kinds of things we can change. And it's not really too difficult to change sort of the, the depth of field of the camera. It can be a little finicky, uh, but you play around with it. It's pretty easy to figure out. So we're over here, again, our playhead at the beginning again. And we're working on this initial starting keyframe. We want it to begin with very shallow depth of field and then kind of open up to a nice, you know, broad, clear image. Again, this is all hypothetical because we're working with, you know, with an image that's not perfect to get a finished result that's not necessarily perfect. Over here in the 3D panel, I'm going to choose current view here. And you can see we have this depth of field option here for this camera. I'm going to set the distance to something very, uh, very shallow, maybe like 0 0.1, something like that. Uh, and then the overall depth... I'm going to increase, I don't want to increase it too much. Um, maybe I'll put it around, I don't know, maybe 0 0.9, that looks pretty good. You can see the trees here in the foreground are very much in focus, and then as it gets further away from it, it just gets more and more blurry. In fact, I think it needs to be a little bit less than that, maybe 0.4. Oh, so, uh, no, you know what, maybe I need to increase it a little bit. Yeah, we need to increase it a little bit here. Let's go to like two. Let's go two straight up. Let's see how this looks, right? Again, we're experimenting. We're having some fun. Let's go with the depth of two, distance of 0.1. Now, as we progress through our animation here, you're going to see not only is the, the area that is being focused on changing, um, but it's eventually going to open up to just a fully sharp image as this effect fades and falls away uh, here because, of course, the camera out here, uh, well, the camera out here shouldn't at least have this depth of field. Yeah, you can see 0.5 and a depth of 0. So this is kind of the original. So we render this out. That's all going to come together quite nicely. So let's just, let's try it. Go ahead and try to render this out instead of just previewing a couple frames here in Photoshop. File, export, render video, as always. We're going to go landscape hyphen. What are we up to? 03. We're going to stick with the same thing. That one pretty fast before. Medium quality at HD TVs, 1920 by 1080. Go ahead and render, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, let's jump out to the desktop once more, Landscape 03. Let's see how this looks. I'm kind of eager. And you can see it's very much not a perfect effect because it's, I mean, we just exported it to a, a lower quality. That medium quality is not a high quality at all. But you can see how we have this, like, crazy depth of field shifting, perspective shifting, three-dimensional uh, vortex that we're flying through. It's really kind of a cool effect totally done in Photoshop, and this is just one example, and, you know, messing around with this example a ton, you can do this with interior photos and change the perspective of the camera a little bit. You can't do it too much because, again, those seams are not going to look perfect, um, but, you know, if you have areas that blend nicely, you can get away with it. Um, there's so much you can do with this, though. It's a really, really cool effect, and it really opens up another whole dimension of you know, 3D, no pun intended, but of 3D in Photoshop and a dimension uh, or an aspect of 3D and working with Photoshop that I think you're absolutely going to love. It's just kind of cool. Right now, I don't know how I realistically use this in any project that I'm working on, but it's really neat to know. It's kind of cool to show off. Um, 
And there's always it's gonna it's gonna end up being used for something, right? We're gonna end up finding a way to use it creatively, or somebody's gonna do something amazing with this effect, and all of us are gonna want to copy it and follow in suit. But at least now you know how to do it and how to take a 3D photo and convert it, or how to take a 2D photo, excuse me, and convert it to something that looks like a 3D scene and whew, float your camera right through it. So. For creating a crazy 3D flying animated multi-dimensional scene in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Daniel Dodson, Tuckbid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.